Welcome back to in Conversation with Puneel Chatwal of Indian Hotels. Uh, Puneel, before the break, we were talking about uh, uh, the restructuring uh, plan. If I talk, if I look at your debt, uh, debt was a concern before you stepped in. Uh, it has uh, in 2016 it was 4,500 crore rupees. When you came in, it was roughly 3,600 crore rupees. Uh, it's come down to 2,300 crore rupees right now, thereabouts. Uh, what's the plan then? You have substantially reduced this. Would it be in a similar pace? By how much more can debt come down, say, by the end of FY20? or FI19? Well, I think the, the, the challenge is not any more reduction of debt because the debt uh, to equity ratio is mm. much healthier than it was it before. Is, definitely. So I think some of the debts at a certain percentage levels which we can pay, especially overseas, mm. uh, we, might, we might do that over mm. the next few quarters, but mm. we don't have a big plan like we did with the rights issue last mm. year. So refinancing would be... Uh, would be refinancing and all has been more or less completed. been accomplished and completed. Mm. So I think we are at a healthy level going mm. forward. Mm. It's important is not only to bring down the debts, rather to improve the other side of the yeah. equation. So we are pretty much hopeful with the restructuring part that we just discussed. Hmm. It will help us to get to better ratios. Okay. Uh, if I look at your uh, development pipeline, that's another point that you had made uh, in the aspiration statement. Can you give us specific numbers as to what the plan is for the next one year and how many more hotels, uh, you know, across Taj, Vivanta and Ginger would you look at upcoming? So we said our portfolio is approximately 165 hotels yeah. and uh, we plan to grow that to anywhere between 35 to mm. 50 percent. Mm. So even if this we year? assumed, no, over the five years period. Okay. Mm. So that would mean another mm. uh, 65 to 70 properties, mm. so of which we expect almost 45 to 50 to come into operation. Mm -hmm. So that will get us very close to almost 200 hotels in operation by 2022. Okay. We do believe that from a number of rooms, from number of properties point of view, mm -hmm. this growth will come from the ginger brand going okay. forward. Mm -hmm. From the quality point of view mm -hmm. and from a leadership point of view, mm -hmm. the main brand, the, mm. the, the backbone of the company was mm. Taj, mm. is Taj and in the short term will continue to be Taj. Mm. So I think that way we are very well positioned mm. uh, with the Taj brand mm. and as we are experiencing good refpar growth, the flow through in Taj would also be very high, mm. especially when you own the assets. Correct. So yeah. your, your margin increase actually translates into much higher absolute values on the bottom line. Hmm. How critical are the, those tourist pockets going to be when you're looking at your growth? And even, even for acquisition for that matter, well, when, you, when, the, when you look at buying or building, is that going to be one of the key themes? Well, I, I don't think either buying or building is going to be a part of our core strategy. We will do okay. that as mm -hmm. and when needed. Mm -hmm. We just did it in Andamans, yeah. in Havelock. Yeah. So coming to this, it's very interesting you asked me this question because mm -hmm. for most of the Indians, especially mm -hmm. in the hospitality sector mm -hmm. or the lovers of tourism, I would mm -hmm. call it, uh, Taj is the brand that has pioneered resort destinations in India. Mm -hmm. Leadership position in resort is a part of the core strategy, mm -hmm. which is a part further a part of the aspiration 2022. Okay. How critical will acquisitions be? And, and I want to get you a comment on one specific buzz that I heard. Uh, Sita de Goa is something that is reportedly being wooed by Taj. Uh, is that uh, on the annual? Um, news to me, uh, but it's, <laughs> uh, it, it, I don't think uh, specific name matters, but okay. one of the consequences mm. of profitability, mm -hmm. one of the consequences of driving margins mm -hmm. is you become a preferred partner. Mm of banks, hmm. of developers, hmm. of owners hmm. and I do believe that over the next three to six months we hmm. will be offered opportunities which hmm. we were not offered maybe a year or two years ago. Okay, so acquisitions is definitely on the annual. Definitely, why not? You know, this is, uh, you know, organic growth has its hmm. own place hmm. but if there is a strategic fit uh, hmm. of acquiring a small portfolio or a mid-sized hmm. portfolio we will evaluate hmm. um, as and when such offers would come along. Hmm. Any specific areas or any specific regions that you that are uh, missing in the entire fit that you would want to look at for acquisitions? Not really. I think we are, as across I said, across the brands as well. I mean, across uh, across uh, uh, the different categories as well. I I think, as I said, we want to have uh, a set a portfolio. Hmm. 
mm -hmm. of very pure brands mm -hmm. and uh, as and when we launch like a conversion, br a conversion brand mm -hmm. we might look at those kind of uh, possibilities okay. but if mm -hmm. we uh, buy something at a Taj level or acquire yeah, something yeah. in a joint venture, yeah. then it has to fit in with the Taj portfolio. Okay. Speaking of acquisitions, and I completely understand, you know, there is a, uh, the legal aspect over here. You have just moved the Supreme Court. So uh, we won't go into that. But I want to understand, uh, Chandra has already talked about how important Taj Mahal Singh is going to be for Indian hotels. Uh, he has categorically said that this is something that they want to hold on to. Um, how... Uh, a, are you going to definitely be bidding as and when NDMC does end up auctioning this? And uh, how aggressive are you willing to go to hold on to that property? Listen, I, I don't think in a television interview I'm going to tell you how <laughs> aggressive. Uh, but definitely uh, we would like to keep Taj Mahal Singh. It's not only mm. a pride for Taj, it's the pride of the nation. Mm. And everybody, especially mm. who has grown up in Delhi, like I have, has mm. grown up with Man Singh. It's a mm. part of... Uh, us being teenagers going to the coffee shop there, the Machan, <laughs> and um, mm. you know, my, my, my high school group, oh, we really? still meet at the Man Singh <laughs> and we still meet at the Machan. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a very special, mm. uh, it has a very special place for mm. a lot of people in whole of India, mm. but specifically in north of India, it yeah. is yeah. just associated with mm. the Taj name. So you do want to keep that in the portfolio, you will be bidding for this? Absolutely. I mean, who would not want to have the Man Singh or the Taj Palace or the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower in Mumbai? I mean, it's a very iconic asset. Yeah. And the most important part of mm -hmm. our aspiration 2022 mm -hmm. is to reinforce and make it very mm -hmm. clear to the entire industry that we are the most iconic and most profitable company that South Asia has ever produced. Okay, fair so enough. So how can we let our icons go away? Speaking of iconic brands, uh, Sea Rock Hotel is something that uh, uh, is being uh, anticipated and waited for by Mumbai cars. Uh, uh, by when can we expect uh, it to become operational and the bridge between Taj Lands and, and Sea Rock, how important will, it, will that be from an outlook and business perspective? Uh, that's a good question. There is an opportunity out here to yeah. create again the most iconic, the largest yeah. five-star complex with more than 1,000 rooms and the largest convention center that, you know, would mm. enable mm. India to host international events. Absolutely. Yeah. However, we are not there as yet. You have mm. to invite me back for a television interview in six months from now, and then I can <laughs> give a more credible answer. Uh, you know, I want to understand the occupancy uh, figures right now. You've gone up to 65%, which, if I'm correct, is one of the highest uh, in the industry at this point in time, at least. Keeping in mind the growth that you are seeing in the sector, by how much can you scale that up? Well, I think more than occupancy, I would be very happy if mm. the rates went up. Yeah. See, the average I'd, rate is roughly 5,200. Uh, uh, 5,200 to 6,000. Yeah. But you know, the kind of uh, service we provide mm. in mm. India, the kind of quality our hotels and, 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 mm. and rooms have, I think we have the ability to charge a bit more. Increase. And we should be charging a bit more because mm -hmm. that's what that quality deserves. So your ideal figure is, is by, by, by say, by the end of the there year? There is no such ideal figure, mm -hmm. Kritika. The mm -hmm. most important thing is there should be the ability to charge beyond Christmas, mm -hmm. New Year, you know, and a holiday season. Mm -hmm. That's when you don't get rooms no matter how much you want to pay. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to have more events happening in the country. We need mm -hmm. to have our fair share of more conventions. Mm -hmm. We need to have more air traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to learn from some other countries who have done so well on tourism mm. that mm. how do we kind of foster even mm. international tourism today it just forms maybe 10 15 yeah. percent of yeah. all the overnights yeah. how can we get that to 20 25 mm. and then i think it would be very healthy fundamentals for the mm. hotel business to thrive both on occupancy and on rate and on rates as well but there is an upside to increasing both correct there is in an upside to increase you both. will be able to increase that. should all the fundamentals stay stay the same same as okay. they are today and keep increasing mm. at the same, uh, by, same by pace. how much by how much occupancy i i would not say how much occupancy and how much mm. rate but i would say uh, a healthy growth in rate because rate has not really increased mm. in real terms yeah. if you look at before 26 11 mm. or before pre lehman yeah. crisis yeah. and add some inflation factor to it mm. if we get to those levels what we had way back in 2007 mm. and 8 mm. plus the normal inflation level we would be a happy industry okay you know, you shared your acquisition and your expansion plans what, 
is that going to be entirely completely on uh, uh, the cash flows and the internal accruals that you're looking at uh, based on the current plan? No, we actually are very much in discussions with a lot of our partners hmm. uh, with their reinforced confidence hmm. in us uh, as a company and, and as a brand with hmm. uh, all the recent signings that we have announced. So okay. there is more and there more interest to, to do more hmm. with us, but also we have opened up to hmm. other business models okay. like hmm. you know doing management contracts where we would Correct. not have done Correct. where we would have yeah. liked to yeah. own or gone with a joint venture so I think yeah. that's a simpler model okay. and um, people you know people like especially the Taj name yeah. they like to own a Taj hotel yeah. so I think we are getting a lot of interest okay what's the ratio that's going to be uh, say at the end of uh, end of the year or by the end of the next five years you have 17,145 rooms uh, that you own and you have uh, roughly around 1,500 through management contracts so how would this ratio now change since you've already said that you're looking at increasing management contracts. in five years from now we are looking at a portfolio hmm. with that 35 to 40 or 45 percent growth that I alluded to before mm. a portfolio of hotels in operation and in pipeline mm. to be 50 percent owned or leased and 50 percent managed okay. and right now obviously this is right now that balance is not there we're more than you know 70 percent owned or owned. leased. Puneet a pleasure talking to you and uh, uh, good luck for the road ahead uh, and I based on your enthusiasm I do believe that uh, you are now on the chart for turnaround uh, for Indian hotels. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and I'm glad you mentioned sustainable turnaround because we have turned around with a healthy uh, full year results that we posted yeah. and a very healthy Q4 results that we have posted a few days ago. Any, Thank you. Any, any target that you have in mind of uh, CAGR growth in the next three years? I'm trying my luck. I. I you know, from four would you go to six, seven percent? <laughs> in the last few minutes, I did experience that, but I can't uh, make forward-looking no statements. Problem. No problem. But I can only assure mm. you of one thing: mm. we will definitely be as good as the market is, mm. and we'll definitely continue to drive margins. Okay, thank you so much, Puneet, and good luck. Thank that was Puneet Chatwal of Indian Hotels. Uh, many thanks for watching the show.